So ordinarily, when you're setting up your cartridge on your own, you'll have to be very concerned with getting the three alignment parameters set up perfectly. Those are azimuth, rake, and zenith. Of course, in order to measure these parameters on your own, you'll have to use microscopy for the rake angle, an electrical measurement for azimuth, and well, unfortunately for Zenith, until we have done creating a product that will allow you to measure it, it's, it's hit or miss. The best alternative is if you send your cartridge to us here in the lab and we'll analyze it for those three parameters and then install them on your own using the custom design shim that we create for your cartridge specifically to achieve perfect alignment in the group. Today I'm going to focus on how to set up your cartridge using this process. It should take 15 minutes. You'll know from there that you've got everything set up to perfection and you will get the best chance of getting the maximum amount of information from the groove. So the first step is to make sure that the underside of the head shell is perfectly level to the surface of the record. And let's do that by putting on a sacrificial record. All right. And then install your dual axis Wally reference with the appropriate number of shims to equal the height of your cartridge plus the height of the corrective shim itself. Now the underside of the head shell is perfectly level to the surface of the record at a height equaling the height of the cartridge when it's under its nominal tracking force plus the thickness of the shim. Now we can install the cartridge. So if your cartridge has been analyzed to have had a rake angle of one and a half or two degrees or more, we're going to include in your kit a top side shim. This is a shim that goes not between the cartridge and the underside of the head shell, but actually on top of the head shell. The reason for that is because if the cartridge is mounted at an angle to the head shell surface, then the screw will be at an angle. And when the head, the head of the screw comes down, we want the head of the screw to meet a flat surface. Otherwise, when you tighten that screw to align your cantilever and your overhang, you could cause the screw to walk and make it difficult to align your cantilever and your stylus. Rounded parts always go forward. So now we install the cartridge with the shim properly oriented between the cartridge and head shell. There is a up and a down, and of course rounded goes up front, so now these shims are made from a material that is a glass bead filled resin that is heat and UV cured to a rigidity slightly less than titanium. Next step is to set tracking force. Immobilize your platter. Defeat your anti-skating mechanism. And we're just going to measure to make sure that the tone arm itself doesn't have its own internal horizontal forces pushing it one way or another, which would compromise the ability for us to accurately align our cantilever. This one is good. It's not pushing one way or the other. If you find your toner arm is pushing more than three or four percent on its own, one way or the other, contact us. Now that we've confirmed that the toner arm doesn't have its own internal forces pushing it one way or the other, we will set overhang and cantilever alignment with the Wally tractor.
So if your cartridge analysis determines that your cartridge has one degree or more of zenith error, then for the alignment of the cantilever, you'll want to use the Wally Zenith to do so. Simply identify from your report which radial line to use and align your cantilever to that line. Recheck your vertical tracking force. Now it's time to measure your anti-skating force. So don't be troubled about how the cartridge looks on the head shell. It might look a little wonky, but understand that stylus cantilever assembly manufacturers align the stylus on the cartridge within tolerance. And those tolerances can be up to plus minus five degrees. It's our opportunity to correct for them if we can know what the error is. And it may result in a cartridge that looks like it's riding sideways or is slightly crooked but I think you'll hear the difference. It's all really a matter of how well that fine line contact stylus is reading the groove. So if your tone arm has removable head shells, you could conceivably mount each one of your analyzed cartridges to a separate head shell and then swap between cartridges in a matter of one or two minutes, making it easy to ensure that each cartridge is set up to perfection. All you need to do is adjust the tone arm height to compensate for the differences in height between the cartridges and reset your vertical tracking force and anti-skating. So if for whatever reason you don't want to use the custom design shim to achieve your ideal rake and azimuth angles, that's okay. You can use the single bladed Wally reference blades to achieve those angles. Uh, a note of caution, however, there are, I'd say about half of the cartridges that we analyze, the rake angle correction that's needed exceeds the ability of most tone arms to achieve. Simply, those tone arms cannot go high enough or low enough to achieve that angle. So along with the cartridge analysis comes a thumb drive, which includes the photos that we used to take measurements of the angular relationship between your cantilever and your stylus and the stylus and the groove. The report itself, keep that for posterity, for reference in the future. If ever you do need new shims made, we can always uh, do that for you. As always, reach out to us if you've got any questions at all, by email or by phone. We're here to support Wally Tools customers to get the most out of the grooves. So there it is. Enjoy Analog Forever.